how easy can macro be? Well, in today's video, I am keeping things real simple and taking shots just like these. Today I want to keep things quick and I want to keep things easy. So that means I've ditched my tripod, I'm not using lighting, I'm not using diffusers, I'm not using rails or any of that other macro paraphernalia which bogs you down. Instead, just got my 100mm macro lens and that's it. I'm going to be hand holding, shooting quickly, shooting by instinct rather than by spending loads of time agonising over a scene. Sometimes I do love really spending the time to craft my images. I'll go out with a big kit bag full of different lights and all of the things that I need to get exactly the shot I want. And that's great on those days when I've got all day maybe to shoot and to spend the time looking for those images and crafting every single element of the shot. Man, I'm dark. But some days we just have too much going on and we don't have four, five, six hours to spend going out taking macro photos. Maybe we've just got half an hour. Maybe we just need to walk to the shops and that's the only outdoor time we're gonna have that day. So what I'm trying to see is, if you are just on a short walk around your local area, can you just grab your camera and still come away with some shots that you actually quite like? Because I think, yes, of course you can, but you need to have a certain fast shooting mindset. You need to know your camera, have your settings ready and be ready to shoot whatever you find. And that is exactly what I'm doing today. So I have come to a similar area to where I've been before. It's about a five minute walk from my house. It's on a nice route. And I'm gonna try and get some quick shots. And as I'm just sort of pacing around this area, there are so many leaves on the ground, all with different colors and all because they've kind of started to decay. This already got like loads of different textures and I just love the way that they look. I'm just starting with a very simple top-down shot on this leaf here because I really like that we've got the yellow tones in the middle and how it fades out towards the deep reds on the edges of the leaf. So I'm going to be shooting in manual mode and it is quite gloomy in here so I'm going to firstly up my ISO to about ISO 400. On a full frame camera that isn't a problem. Keep my shutter speed about a hundredth of a second. F3.5, focus in the middle. Yeah, that's nice enough but I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit more make the most of that macro. And here this really lovely deep red leaf has fallen on top of these, uh, these ivy leaves. So we've got that lovely color contrast of that deep red against the green of the ivy leaves. So I'm just gonna frame a shot up here. This isn't so much macro at this point, more close up. But I'm also going to get in even closer because the edges of this red leaf are really, really kind of jaggedy and sharp and I like the look of that. And here we've just got this crisped up old leaf but it's just sort of curling round on itself and honestly I just really like that pattern. really like the shape it's forming rather. So I'm at ISO 640. F4, 125th of the second. It's in no way the most exciting of images, but I just quite like how it looks. Maybe there's some more I can get on this leaf. Just love the textures that you get on these like crispy old leaves. And by keeping things simple, just by having it handheld like this and just being able to move it around, you can really experiment with your shots and just literally move the camera and kind of see if any angles, if any particular compositions stand out. Hello little fly. Do you want to hang around and be in a photo?
shooting really quickly like this and just kind of steaming through trying to find some shots might not necessarily be the best way to find the most compelling compositions. I do think that there is a lot to be said for moving quickly and kind of letting yourself shoot by instinct. If something catches your eye at all, point your camera towards it because if it's caught your eye for a particular reason, maybe it stood out because of the colours, the textures, the patterns, the, the light hitting it in a certain way, then odds are it might catch the eye of the viewer looking at your photo. I think that kind of instinctive shooting might be something that comes a little bit more with practice. The more you learn about what makes a good photo, the more likely it is that you're going to spot those photos as you're walking around. So like anything, practice makes perfect. The more you get out doing these quick photo shoots, practicing these techniques, the more likely you're gonna find more stuff next time and next time. leaves growing up the wood. Again it's that colour contrast, the green against the brown. And on some more leaf textures we've got these big ones with there's definitely some kind of sort of fungus or something on it but all these little circles which I think look pretty cool as patterns. And there's some more around here as well. Again just lots of textures, we've got holes in some of these leaves that we can focus on. I've just spotted this mushroom on the floor. So again, handheld, because that's all I've got. Just going to push these slightly out of the way, really low down, right on the floor. Some more beautiful crispy leaves here. I know I'm really running the risk of this video basically being lots of photos of leaves but you know what I don't mind that. I think there's something so beautiful about these are just so mundane things there's just thousands of them underneath our feet as we're walking around but when you actually get up close and you look at these colors and textures and patterns that they've got through a macro lens something so beautiful about them and everyone is different everyone has different colors wow big spider so i really do just love finding and photographing all of these different ones i think i'm also really drawn to them because they really tell that story of autumn that all of these leaves have turned this golden color they've fallen off the trees and we're moving into winter I just found this little patch of lichens down here. I think they look really, really nice. So again, I've got my camera basically in the bushes, right at ground level. F3.2, hundredth of a second. Hand holding like this is really great because it means that you can get your camera right on the ground, get some lovely out of focus foreground. And I was just passing this old log and as we know logs can be great sources of things growing on it this time of year and there are some more interesting looking lichen that I'm going to try and get in a shot. It's a bag off scenario then. Maybe I can get in around here. I'm just playing around with the scene and I'm sorry I've got my back to you but it's starting to rain and I'm trying to shoot quickly. My f2.8 ISO 800 because it is quite dark under these trees and I am manually focusing. Not really sure I'm getting any photos I'm particularly pleased with here. Everything's in quite an awkward position and it is very gloomy under these trees. None of this is particularly stable as it turns out. I'm trying to get my camera in under this log. I 
I mean, to be honest, I don't really think anything I've got today has been particularly brilliant. Certainly I don't think anything, you know, portfolio worthy. But that's not really the point. The point is just about getting out, about enjoying that short break of being outside, away from the stresses of work and whatever, and just enjoying taking some photos. It keeps you feeling energized about your photography. It keeps you feeling creative. And it's that that's gonna help give you that boost, to give you that urge to get out and do bigger and better things when you've got a bit more time to do it. I was just walking back because the rain is coming down quite a lot now. But as I just walked past this stack of logs, I just saw this one tiny little mushroom. And again, it's about reacting, seeing something that catches your eye and thinking, yes, there's a photo opportunity. So in this instance, it's just sticking up off this log. It's very, very small, but it does just kind of stand by itself. But in order for me to um, try and separate it from its background, I'm going to stick it F2.8. I'm at ISO 1250 because it is very dark under here. And again, this is not the most exciting of photos. In fact, most of the ones in this video probably aren't even very good. But again, it's just about getting out and getting these shots. See if I move my camera around here a little bit. Using leaves as like extreme foreground. Autofocus on the mushroom's cap. And yeah, I do think that looks nice. I have to definitely prefer it from this angle because there's even more separation on the mushroom itself here. And we get a lovely effect with this ivy leaf in the shot. So this is it kind of with a very clean view. If I just bring my camera around, we start to get the ivy leaf. It's almost casting like a haze, but it just gives it this extra sort of magical little look that I think looks really, really nice. So don't hesitate to put leaves and other foliage and things right in front of your camera lens. You know, I'm actually quite pleased with that photo. And by just keeping nimble, hand holding the camera, no tripod, just seeing the shot and reacting to it. And that's how I've got what I needed. Well, I think that brings me to an end of today's video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then do please hit that like button. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.